This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today I'm going to narrate the presentation Induced Telluric Currents from Mayaki Events and Their Effects on the World, written by Robert Hawthorne Jr. from EU Salon 2025. This presentation is dedicated to Robert's father, Robert Frank Hawthorne Sr., and friend James Wesley Hill. Introduction Kinetic impacts are currently the only accepted explanation for the formation of craters on the Earth by mainstream scientists. They believe that only the high pressures and temperatures generated by hypervelocity impacts can cause shocked lamellae and quartz crystals. However, recent studies have discovered that lightning can also deliver these pressures and temperatures to shock quartz as well as form the glassy spirals found in some glassy meteorites. Also, lightning in the form of telluric currents or electric currents which travel through the layers of the earth can be induced to form positive step leaders rising up out of the ground forming craters. Furthermore, recent studies on superflares from the sun or what are called Mayaki events can induce such telluric currents to destructive power levels and could possibly be responsible for some of earth's craters. This presentation will propose the theory and provide supporting evidence a Mayaki event has induced telluric currents in a transformer action by stepping up the existing power levels to form upheaval dome in Utah, as well as suggest a triple Mayaki event was witnessed by the ancients influencing world culture. The Obsession Stone, Telluric Currents, and the Upheaval Dome in 1996, his father, Robert F. Hawthorne Sr., took a couple of samples of rock he named the Obsession Stone, which both he and his friend Wes Hill thought was a meteorite or tektite to the University of Pittsburgh. Professor William Cassidy examined them for analysis. Our graduate student, Henry Prelwitz, has been examining a specimen you submitted as a possible impact type from the upheaval dome structure in Utah. His preliminary observations are that it consists principally of irregular shaped colorless grains of isotropic material accompanied by rare rounded isotropic grains. Both the irregular and rounded isotropic grains are probably glass. End quote. Cassidy, 1996. In our experience, the specimen is different from other impact glasses such as those associated with the Aualau crater in Mauritania, the Henbury craters in Australia, the Wabar craters in Arabia, and the Monturaki crater in Chile. All of these occur as large fragments with a general slaggy appearance and contain embedded spheres of nickel-iron alloy." End quote. Cassidy, 1996. In this letter written by Mike Zelensky of NASA, Zelensky identifies the obsession stone as the mineral analcime and suggests the mineral resembles a volcanic glass. I enclose all of your samples, I think, that you sent to me, along with the results of an X-ray diffraction study of the two samples, which came out with identical results. The samples are a combination of analcyme and calcite. The gross petrography does resemble a vitrified glass, but this could have been a volcanic glass, quoted Zelensky, 2001. Both of the attempts to ascertain if the obsession stone was a tektite were unsuccessful. Robert at least knew what the mineral was. He was still left with no mechanism as to how this unique form of analcyme came to be, since he wasn't aware of any volcanism in that area in the past. What mechanism could form rocks made of glassy spheres? Also, can that same mechanism create craters as well as deliver the temperatures and pressures required to shock quartz? This paper, written in 2015 by Kimberly Genero and her team, explained how volcanic lightning strikes are responsible for forming glassy spherules in the ash deposits. Genero, 2015. This study reviews the known glass spherule forming processes and proposes for the first time a mechanism induced through the heat generated by volcanic lightning in eruptive columns and plumes laterally spreading clouds during explosive eruptions. Quoted Genero, 2015. In 2015, the paper titled Lightning Induced Shock Lamellae in Quartz by Reto Guier et al. discussed how lightning can also produce the shock patterns found in quartz, which were previously only thought to derive from the temperatures and pressures that an impact event would produce. Using transmission electron microscopy, we show that planar deformation lamellae occur within quartz in the substrate of a rock fulgurite, i.e. a lightning-derived glass. These lamellae exist only in a narrow zone adjacent to the quartz fulgurite boundary and are comparable to planar deformation features, such as shock lamellae, caused by hypervelocity impacts of extraterrestrial objects. Gear et al., 2015. 
Now Robert understood that lightning can in fact be the mechanism for creating glassy spheres and rocky bodies, and is able to shock quartz. He then wondered if lightning could, and at what power levels are needed, create such a large crater as Upheaval Dome, roughly 5 kilometers in diameter. Telluric Currents A telluric current is an electric current that flows underground or through the sea, resulting from natural and human-induced causes. Quoted from Wikipedia. An example of naturally induced telluric currents can be seen in this image from the Discovery Channel Raging Planet series. Lightning has an extraordinary effect on objects on the ground. They respond to the strong electric field by growing positive streamers that reach up anywhere between three and a few hundred feet above the ground. Quoted from Discovery 1997. On the YouTube channel Barely Science, formerly known as Electro Terravision, Jacob Gable connects positive and negative electrodes to the top and bottom of a wine bottle, respectively. Gable filled the bottle with dirt from his backyard and brought the chamber to low pressure with a vacuum pump. When electrically charged, a plasma, telluric current, is seen forming a crater from underneath the surface. In another experiment, Gable effectively demonstrates a cross-section of the telluric currents traveling through the earth, dirt, to the surface as suggested. An intense current could explain the igneous center of upheaval dome. In this video from the YouTube channel Electric Universize, he narrates from the paper, quote, Polygonal Crater Formation by Electrical Discharges by Wayne Byrne, 2015. Here, Byrne provides a conceptual model of the inside of an electric current and how these currents form geometric shaped craters, quoted Byrne, 2015. The central image is a cross-section of an electric current by Byrne illustrating the hexagonal shape and how one layer of the current is out of phase with its surrounding layers. The same feature is visible in the outer and inner rims of Upheaval Dome, suggesting this geological site could very well have been formed from electrical discharge. Now compare these images. The image on the right is the end result of another one of Gable's experiments. Notice how the surrounding terrain of the electric discharge is similar to the surrounding terrain of Upheaval Dome. What kind of energetic event could cause telluric currents to be so violently induced? Super flares and Mayaki events. In this article from SciNews by Natalie Anderson, astronomer Zhuo Lin Tu at Nanjing University states, Super flares are much stronger explosions than typical solar flares with total energies varying from 10 cap 32 to 10 cap 38 ergs. Note, the average lightning bolt can deliver about 1 billion to 10 billion joules of energy. That's a lot. Can this energy be converted into lightning? Earlier this month, Fizz.org published this article by Los Alamos National Laboratories suggesting cosmic ray showers seem to play a pivotal role in triggering lightning flashes, quoted from Los Alamos 2025. These cosmic rays produce secondary high-energy electrons and positrons in the atmosphere that further ionize the air and created pathways in thunderclouds, allowing lightning to follow and travel faster, quoted Los Alamos 2025. In this article by Ben Turner, he writes about how radiation storms caused by cosmic rays or strong solar flares have been affecting Earth for thousands of years. He also writes that scientists have been using dendrochronology, the study of dating events from tree rings, to track C-14 spikes in tree rings. Quoted Turner, 2022. Named Mayaki events after the lead author of the first study, Dr. Fusa Mayaki, to describe them, the spikes occur roughly once every 1,000 years or so and are recorded as sudden increases in the radiocarbon levels of ancient tree rings, quoted Turner, 2022. But instead, they discovered that the Mayaki events did not line up with peak solar activity and some events, unlike the brief flashes we recognize as solar flares, lasted for one or two years quoted Turner, 2022. But the Carrington event was 80 times less powerful than the AD 774 Mayaki event, quoted Turner, 2022. In this video, Ben Davidson from the YouTube channel Space Weather News, formerly Suspicious Observers, uses data from NASA of a magnetar burst cracking its own surface. He suggests a scalable version of this event could happen on Earth, and it is Robert's contention that Upheaval Dome is the area where the current exited the ground as an upstrike in one of the many known Mayaki events. Is there any evidence of these types of solar events happening in historical records? If so, how was the culture influenced? Three-Legged Crow, Patnia Theron, Head of Sinbad, 
and twin comets as confronted animals. If Mayaki events are supposed to only happen once every thousand years or so, as the experts suggest, such as Turner 2022, these three events occurring within the span of roughly 250 years caused Robert to ask if there are any historical accounts covering the significance, if any, of these events. Robert then put his focus toward that period of time and began looking for supporting evidence of these events influencing world culture. In high school, Robert learned that Sumer was the first civilization dating around 5000 BC. Is it possible the beginning of civilization and world culture as we know it was influenced by these solar events? He later heard of a legend mentioned by Neil Thompson in an episode of The Electric View called The Three-Legged Crow and how it was basically the Asian creation myth from the same time period. The Three-Legged Crow is a mythological creature in various mythologies and arts of East Asia. It is believed to inhabit and represent the sun, evidence of the earliest bird-sun motif or totemic articles excavated around 5000 BCE at China, quoted Wikipedia. In the article, Three-Legged Golden Crow in the Hexi Corridor by iNews states, It is the sacred bird in ancient Chinese mythology. According to legend, the ancients saw sunspots and thought it was a crow, quoted iNews 2024. The image on the left is a stone totem outside an emperor's tomb in Korea showing the three-legged crow. The intention here is to point out the Korean three-legged crow version. Samjogo has a full halo around it. This suggests an Earth-directed kill shot flare event was witnessed by the ancients, compared to the NASA image here on the right. It appears at least to Robert that the ancient Chinese and Richard Carrington did the same thing, which was to record the sunspot size in relation to the Earth-facing sun disk, respectively. He then asked himself, are the size of sunspots and sunspot groups relative to flare strength? According to this paper in Earth Planets in Space, the size of sunspots and sunspot groups are relative to flare strength. It had become clear that large sunspot groups with the potential to produce Carrington-class flares, areas of more than 3,000 MSH, have appeared on a total of 119 to 139 days between 1879 and 2016, and a sunspot group with the potential to produce an X100-class flare appeared between March and April 1947, quoted Watari, 2022. Robert then began to research any other ancient cultures and legends based on three-legged creatures. He discovered the Triskelion, or Triskel, meaning three-legged in Malta. Robert noticed the timing of the earliest appearance of the Triskelion, 4400 to 3600 BCE as well. He then assumed this is a good connection, provided the time for civilization to migrate this far west from the cradle of civilization, carrying with them the memory of the solar events these images originated from, quoted Wikipedia. In an article titled Isle of Man, Mystery of the Triskel, creative services professional and former journalist Ben Schmidt writes, One of the oldest uses of the Triskel depicting human legs bent at the knee was an ancient symbol of the island of Sicily, when it was a colony of Greece in the 8th century BC. Sicily's Triskel depicts the three legs emanating from the winged head of Medusa. According to Roman author Pliny the Elder, the symbol represented the triangular shape of the island, quoted Schmidt 2015. With all due respect to Pliny the Elder, for the sake of this presentation, Robert must ask the viewers to put aside the triangular shape of the island, part of the story, and consider what we have left of the Sicilian Triskel, when compared to the three-legged crow image here. We have Sicily's Triskel depicts three legs emanating from the winged head of Medusa, Schmidt 2015, compared to the Chinese where the ancients saw sunspots and thought it was a crow, quoted iNews 2024. Can these similarities be an archetypal story describing a great cosmic event? It is Robert's contention, they are. Here's an interesting fact he also learned as he's sure most of us are aware of the stories of Medusa and her ability to turn to stone any man who met her gaze. However, in the Japanese version of the three-legged crow legend, Yatagarasu, the name of the three-legged crow, is said to have been petrified and turned to stone at Kumanu Hongu, quoted John Dugill, 2011. Here's another image of a Triskel called the Snake Witch Stone out of Gotland, Sweden. Not much is known about this and much is speculation, but one can clearly see a Triskel. The animals are created as a wolf, an eagle, and a boar. The motif of snake witch or snake charmer is similar to the mistress of animals or Patnia Theron, 
of ancient Greece and Mesopotamia, as well as the Pillars of Hercules motif and the head of Sinbad pictograph in central Utah. Here are images of the infinite Hercules strangling the two serpents on the left, the head of Sinbad pictograph panel in central Utah in the center, and the columns of Hercules on the right by Ginés Seron Pegon in 2007. Although the stories behind these images differ, one can clearly see a similar motif yet are from cultures completely isolated from each other. Ben Hyde and Robert Hawthorne Jr. make the argument that this motif can be explained by a plasma instability involving the polar configuration proposed by a Thunderbolts Project co-founder, David Talbot, along with the frequent appearance of two comets. Robert encourages you to view Twin Comets Recorded Through Antiquity and Their Effects on World Culture on the YouTube channel, The Geometric View. For example, the image here on the left is a Photoshop image Robert made from several images, the tree line with pink aurora from RWO Photography 2021. He mirrored it to give it the anti-confronted animal appearance and inserted a comet image from NASA enhanced with green coloring and laid it over an image of the polar configuration from the YouTube channel Cosmism 2018. A striking resemblance can be seen when compared to the pottery artifact showing Patnia Theron, or the Mistress of Animals. The left petroglyph was taken in Three Fingers Canyon, located in central Utah. The image on the right is a Fremont-style glyph taken at McConkie Ranch in northeastern Utah. Both images could suggest a polar configuration with twin comets present. The image on the right even has an arrow piercing the hearts of the gathered powers, as mentioned by David Talbot in Symbols of an Alien Sky, quoted Talbot 2012. The NASA Jet Propulsion Lab Center for Near-Earth Object Studies has created an interactive site regarding the twin comets. Here one can see the potential for a polar configuration with twin comets as all the involved planets and twin comets are present. One just needs a Mayaki event when the PC was properly oriented to see some exciting events transpire in the heavens. Events which could have been recorded in ancient legends, artwork, and rock art. Conclusion and Summary This presentation has discussed how telluric currents are electric currents already in the Earth and can be stepped up in power during major solar events forming craters. This discussion covered how these same induced currents can be responsible for shocked quartz and glassy spherules found in some meteorites and tektites, providing geophysicists with another tool to explain crater formation without solely relying on high-velocity impacts. This presentation explained how a Mayaki event could have induced telluric currents to form upheaval dome, Utah, a unique form of anal seam called the obsession stone. The material provided today suggests that a triple Mayaki event over the short span of approximately 250 years could be responsible for the many creation legends told worldwide and influencing culture even today. This presentation was created and presented at EU Salon 2025 by Robert Hawthorne Jr. Robert's personal background served in the United States Navy from 2003 to 2007 on board the USS John C. Stennis CVN-74 as an aviation boatswain's mate, second-class petty officer specializing in crash and salvage, flight deck fire and rescue team. Robert used his GI Bill to earn an AAS in electronics engineering from SLCC in 2020. Also in 2020, Robert wrote a paper titled, Electric Discharge, Not an Impact, Caused the Formation of Upheaval Dome, Canyonlands National Park, Utah, which was peer-reviewed and published in the Journal for Systemics, Cybernetics, and Informatics. In closing, Robert would like to take this time now to thank all of you for your attention, and as always, discern for yourselves.